Hey, this is really In this video, I want to um, work on the button click bot or key press bot um, uh, expert advisor <coughs> one more time. And um, we already built this in the last video. If you haven't watched the last video, you should absolutely watch it first before you have a look at this video. And we wrote this source code, <coughs> which is like a really easy and uh, small program where we just like we act on button clicks. So for example, if I click B, I open a buy position. If I click S, I open a sell position. This is working and this is working fine. But what happens if I do not want to open a buy or sell position, but instead of that, I want to place a pending uh, buy stop or sell stop or buy limit or sell limit. And the position shall be defined by um, the movement of my cursor. So if I move my mouse cursor here somewhere at this price, for example, 24,000, I want to place a buy stop or sell limit position there. So there are several things we have to do and we will do all this using the um, on chart event function that we already used before. So right now we only work with this chart um uh, chart event key down, but there are more events, of course, and we will use a event which is um, the mouse move event, I think, <laughs> which will give us the um, uh, uh, X and Epsilon coordinates uh, of the mouse. So we can check if ID is equal to chart event, and I think it is mouse move. And then we can print, for example, the ID, the L parameter. And this is always the same like um, way of working with the on chart event. I always do it like this. I, I check pretty much a chart event, then I print all of the parameters, and then I analyze what happens. So for example, if I move the mouse here in the chart, you can see nothing happens. And because I built my code like this, I know that we do not even get inside of this if statement. So I will have to find a solution. And the problem here is that we will have to enable the mouse event first, pretty much. So here you can see if we click on chart event mouse move and click on F1 on our keyboard, we will go um, to the uh, reference. Uh, and to the entry for the types of chart events. And there you can read about the chart event mouse move. And there it says mouse move, mouse clicks, uh, um, trigger this event pretty much. And it only works if chart event mouse move is set to true. So there's another link. So I can click on this again. <clears throat> and I can see that this is a chart um, property integer enumeration identifier. So I can see um, <clears throat> mouse move. This chart event, it has to be set to true explicitly. So this is usually done in the on init uh, function. So we can write the on init function here and init, init succeeded. And we can say here in this on init function, um, chart set integer, and then we say chart ID zero for the current chart. Uh, then we say, whoops, uh, chart, chart uh, event mouse move. And then we say true. And this will set this chart event, uh, this will activate it pretty much. So if we uh, compile this and fix this problem, it has to be zero, not O. And we click on compile and now if I move my cursor inside of this chart, you can see there is a lot um, a lot of traffic in the experts log now. And you will have to set this explicitly to true because this triggers so many chart events. So this is like a uh, one more step you will have to take because very often you do not want this event to trigger the on chart event function every time. So you will have to set this to true explicitly. But you can see, if I, for example, start in the upper left corner, you can see, like, again, this first number is 10. It's just the ID for this chart event, which is the mouse movement. And the second and third parameter, the L parameter and the D parameter, so the long and the double parameter, they are the coordinates. So if we start in the upper left corner, 
And this is always like the X coordinate and this is the epsilon. So if I move to the to the right side, the X parameter should change. So one should change, one should stay the same. So you can see like the first parameter, which is the X parameter, it will it is it is bigger the more I move the cursor to the right. And if I move it to the bottom, the second parameter will become bigger. And this is always measured from the upper left corner, starting like from the upper left corner, because this is like the default base corner. So, yeah, what we can do here is we can say now, <clears throat> um, here we can say, um, for example, we create two global variable variables, last x and last y, and we can say, as soon as um, these the the mouse mouse moves, we can say last x is uh, the L param and last y is the D param. And there is a warning, I think, if we compile this, yeah, because there is a type conversion. But if we typecast it to a integer variable, the error is gone and everything works fine. And we now always have the last x and last y. <clears throat> so what we can do here now is we can take these two values and uh, since we op want to open positions at a specific price, of course we, we do not need like the the x and y coordinates, but we need the, the, the actual price. Like for example, this would be 24,018. <clears throat> so what we can do here is there's a function for this. So we can say, um, um, or we can, yeah, I mean, we do not even need this as a global variable. We just need the last price as a global variable, I think. So we can make these two local variables. And then we can say um, last price is equal to, and there's this function like chart. Um, I think it is chart uh, time, no, chart x, y to time price. Because this function... <coughs> It will take an x and a an y coordinate and it will like uh, transform or calculate like the, um, the, the price at this specific point. So we can say uh, chart x, y to time price and then we have five um, parameters for this function. The first one is the chart and the current chart where the expert advisor is attached to always has the ID zero. So we choose zero. Then we have X and Y and then we choose last X, last Y of course. And then we have um, the sub window which is, oh no, we have six parameters. The sub window is zero again because we have like this main chart window. And then we have a time and a price. Oh and also the sub window. We can only provide these as variables, and this is important. So if I provide the last, wait, so, um, yeah, no, we, we would have to create variables for this. So we say sub window and we say um, date time time. And now we provide these three variables. So first the sub window, <coughs> then the time, and then our last price variable here. <coughs> and um, we do not even have to do it like this. Okay, this is enough. So if we print this now, for example, the last price, and we can also print like the time. So you can see that we now receive the price and the time for our um, current cursor position. So you can see wherever I move my cursor, the price and the time, um, they are displayed like in, in uh, down here. Yeah, and I think this is working really, really great. So when we can now go back to our position opening, and we said that we do not want to open buy and sell positions here, but instead of that, we want to open buy stop and sell stop positions. <coughs> and by limit and sell limit. So we check if 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 the B is pressed, we check if um, uh, the last price, so the price where our cursor was, is above like the symbol info uh, double, symbol above the ask price. In this case, we want to open a buy uh, stop, right? So we say trade trade by stop like this 0 0.1 lots for example and the price is the last price 
And yeah, that is already enough. <coughs> oh, and we, what we can do here is we can um, round this last price so there are no problems with any like numbers after the decimal point. And if the price is currently, or like our cursor position is below the actual market price, then we want to um, place a buy limit, right? So again, <coughs> 0.1 lots, for example. Then we copy this and paste it for the uh, S key press event. So here we say if the price is above the bid price, then we want to open a sell limit. If it is below the bid price, then we open a sell stop like this. So if we compile this, I hope that this works. So I can move my cursor anywhere I want, for example, up here at roughly 24,000. And if I press B, uh, nothing happens. Wait, did I hit B? Yeah, I hit B. So. There is a bug somewhere, and this is good because we can check this now. Mm, somehow, our chart event is not even triggered. So we will have to check <coughs> this. So we can say print ID um, L param the param, yeah, we just need the L parameter, but yeah, let's check this. So if I press B, ah, okay. It looks like it, it doesn't work. Hmm, it works. I think, wait, let me remove this. This is annoying. <clears throat> I think I have to, no, I don't know what the problem was. It is working somehow now. Sell limit, sell limit, sell limit, sell stop, buy stop, buy limit. Okay, everything everything seems to work. I, I Honestly, I don't know what the problem was there before. Maybe I didn't really select the chart or something went wrong. But yeah, as you can see here, I can now place positions wherever I want with just a single key stroke so this is yeah how you can use like this key press mechanism and also add things like uh, the mouse movement to your program so again let's have a look at the at the at the whole program what we added here is this like chart set integer where we enable the mouse move event and then we have this global variable last price where we press uh, where we save the last price which we <coughs> calculate in this block. Um, yeah, and then we, we can just use this price to open buy stop and buy limit positions. So this is it about this. Um, as you can see, there are a lot of things you can do with the on chart event function. Just read about it in the documentation. You can read about all the different chart events and maybe you can you want to play around with it build expert advisors around this concept and i hope that you have fun and yeah wish you all the best on your uh, programming journey have a great time until next time uh, see you then bye bye